And right here, right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Esters and dominance. This is a huge topic. I've recorded this maybe five times. I only get 10 minutes, so I'm going to talk fast. Strap on your shoes and your belt and stay tuned. If you want more information on this, one of the best resources I found, he actually coined the term and started saliva testing on hormones, was Dr. John Lee, MD. You can go to his website at johnleemd.com. You can buy some of his great books, what your doctor may not tell you about premenopause, what your doctor may not tell you about menopause, what your doctor may not tell you about breast cancer. A lot of great information. Now, you saw at the beginning all the causes of estrogen indominance, right? I don't want to go into like how each thing can cause estrogen dominance. The key is when you're working with someone or if you're working with yourself and you have breast cancer, liver problems, thyroid problems, adrenal gland problems, cysts, fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, PMS, bloating, edema, weight gain, blood clotting, all that stuff, it's a sign of estrogen dominance. You have to figure out why you have estrogen dominance, and that's the key. So you need to work with a Czech holistic lifestyle coach, a functional medicine practitioner, to get assessed to figure out why you have estrogen dominance. Now, let's look at some research studies. You know, most research studies are actually paid off by prescription and government. Um, So it's hard to really believe where the research is coming from. But let's look at some research studies. You know, nowadays with estrogen dominance, the big thing out there is breast cancer. Why are so many people getting breast cancer? They're spending billions of dollars on research to find a cure. It's not about a cure. It's about prevention. So let's look at some of these studies. According to the National Cancer Institute, the breast incident rates have increased more than 40% from 1973 to 1998. In the year 2000, approximately about 200,000 women were diagnosed with breast cancer. Since 1950, breast cancer incidents have risen 60%. How come? Who knows? It could be petrochemicals in our our society, xenobiotics, xenoestrogens, uh, children in the womb getting exposed to over 250 carcinogens before being even born. It could be diet, nutrition, physical stress, chemical stress, all these factors. That's that's essentially why. Some will agree that this is due to better in early detection, but even more women over 80 years of age where this early detection issue is doubtful, the incidence of breast cancer have risen over the past 30 years from 1 in 30 women to 1 in 8 women. The American Cancer Society estimated that in the year 2000, almost half a million people in the United States were dying of cancer, 40, about 40,000 or just over 7% of those of women were dying of breast cancer. This means 50% of women die of breast cancer each year. There's an annual statistics in the United States, but even more sobering to realize that worldwide, uh, almost 2 million women die every year of breast cancer. And the question is why? You know, they're giving chemotherapy, they're giving radiation, t- uh, tamoxifen, and they're doing mammograms. Well, you have to look at this. The statistics on these things, they're not even working. If you look at the, the um, issues with, um, let's say, radiation, well, a research study showed that this treatment is not working. In fact, while using local radiation to breast cancer, it reduces deaths from 13.2%, but it increases deaths from other diseases by almost 21%. So the conclusion of the study was the treatment was a success, but it, the patient died. So the radiation is actually causing, it might kill the cancer, it might, but it's causing so many other diseases or letting other diseases actually flourish. So is it working? No, because we're having 2 million people a year die. Tamoxifen, very toxic drug. The Lancet um, showed, and it was done by a professor, Sir Richard uh, Pito, he showed that breast cancer rose about 20% from 1960 to 1985. In 1985 to 1987, breast cancer deaths were said to have decreased 20%. Without speculating on the case from 1985, Rest embraced breast cancer, citing the resource information, he addressed the decline, right? But what he showed was that tamoxifen um, causes hot flashes, night sweats, and actually can cause tamoxifen-induced uterine cancer. So we're seeing an incidence or an increase in uterine cancer. So you're taking a drug to kill one thing but causing something else. Let's look at mammograms. Well, they're showing, I mean, I can keep going with mammograms. I can show you with chemotherapy. The bottom line is this stuff isn't working. I know a lot of people are going to poo-poo me and say this is bullshit. You know, it helped me. It, it, it's, it's helping people. It's such a small percentage. The key is we have to figure out prevention, figure out why you have estrogen dominance. What is estrogen dominance? The bottom line is it's when you don't have enough progesterone to counterbalance the unwanted side effects of estrogen. You could have high estrogen, good, lo- good levels, or low. You just don't have enough progesterone to back, basically balance it out. Progesterone is progestation. It brings nutrients and oxygen to the uterus, to the fetus, 
to, to all your organs where estrogen actually asphyxiates it. Now, you need both. You need both. You don't want too much of one and too much of the other. You need a balance, just like in your cycle. The follicular phase is, quote-unquote, more estrogen dominant. Then you have ovulation. That's when they actually crisscross. And in the luteal phase, which is always 12 days, you become more progesterone dominant. That's why progesterone is progestation, and that's why that's you can get pregnant. So you always need a balance. Now, how do we get it? Well, it can come from anything. The bottom line is it's any one of these stressors. And when these stressors affect the body, the body always thinks about safety and security first. That is how our autonomic nervous system works. Safety is security, sustenance, then procreation. It doesn't think about anything but safety. So when you're stressed, you have to fight inflammation, regulate blood sugar, regulate um, blood pressure, all these things. The body steals precursor hormones to overuse cortisol. Well, these precursor hormones actually help to produce progesterone, DHEA, your estrogens, and testosterone. So you'll see a decline in these because you have to fight stress. Now, at the same token, one of the main issues, and this many, is the issue of insulin resistance. And this can even go with men that have um, BPH or when they have breast cancer, endometriosis, PCOS, and all these issues. When you eat too much sugar and you become insulin resistant, you actually produce too many aromatase enzymes. These aromatase enzymes convert estrogen to test, um estrogens instead of testosterone. This can happen in men and women. And you have a high level of aromatase enzymes in breast tissue and in the prostate. So let's look at some other research. Dr. Cavalieri, he was a major participant in the National Cancer Institute Symposium. And he spoke and said all evidence implicated estrogen as a major cause as breast and prostate cancer. And this has to do with those um, aromatase enzymes and the overconversion of, of, of DHEA to estrogen. And you see this in male pattern baldness because they're overproducing these androgens, which is DHT, and they're not producing the, the balance of hormones in the body. It's all about balance, balanced physiology and homeostasis. So the th interesting thing about estrogen, it actually stimulates what's called an oncogene BCL2, which causes cell proliferation growth, cell growth, and decreases aptosis, which is cell death. Pro, um, testosterone as well as progesterone stimulate uh, a preventative gene that actually inhibits these things from growing. It actually inhibits 5-alpha reductase as well, and this is implicated high in men with prostate issues and cancer. So progesterone actually inhibits these and decreases cell growth and proliferation and stops um, causes cell aptosis as well as decreases the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. So supplementing with progesterone in the right amount is a great thing to do. Now, how do we test for that? Now, I'm just trying to get some tidbits of information into your head so you can go out there and research on your own. But how do we test for this? Two best tests that I use with women, beside using a lot of subjective assessments to figure out where these things are coming from. Is it the nutrition, their life? Is it in their environment? Is it in mercury? Is it heavy metal poisoning? It, do they smoke? Is it something in their environment? Is it too much sugar? Is it not enough fat, not enough protein, digestive problems, parasite? All these things can cause estrogen dominance. Beside doing that, I do a 205 adrenal hormone lab from BioHealth Diagnostics, biohealthinfo.com. You can look at the adrenal glands, how much stress you're under, as well as a lot of the different hormones in your body. It's all saliva-based, so you're testing the free hormone that can be used versus blood, which tests the bound hormones that can't be used. So you get a good reading of what you need to supplement with. It tells you if you're estrogen dominant. Another great test by Metametrics is called Estronex. Go to estronex.com, E-S-T-R-O-N-A-X.com, and it tests the E2 to E1 ratio, which is good to bad estrogen. It can tell you and tell your doctor, especially if you're on drugs or synthetic hormones, if you're estrogen dominant and how to treat it. And that's the most important thing is knowing how to treat it, but also doing this subjective assessment so you know where it's coming from. So hopefully I've educated you. This is a gigantic topic. Right, gigantic. The bottom line is it's stress causing altered physiology in the body, which causes increased cell growth, cell proliferation, and decreased aptosis. Now, am I saying that estrogen is the only reason, or excess estrogen is the only reason people are getting cancers and increased cysts? Well, I don't have research on it, but from my perspective and what I believe, yes, it's an overdose of estrogen in our water, in our plastics, in our food, and from stress. People are getting bombarded, men and women, and this is one of the reasons why we're seeing this so prevalent. So hopefully you've learned something. Do some more research, and just remember, you got to find out where it's coming from, treat it, but also alter your nutrition and life because that's the foundation for who you are.